This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. This is Session 1, Video Clip 2, entitled Variances from Traditional Higher Education Courses. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number 1. Which of the variances noted have you encountered before in educational contexts? Number 2. What are the distinctions between synchronous and asynchronous technologies? Number 3. According to the video, what extra component is added to learning experiences when a learning community is developed? And number four, how would you describe authentic assessment in your own words? It is presumed that most higher education courses experienced so far in your education have been fairly traditional in that they have been lecture-based, with the instructor talking to the course content that may be simultaneously displayed using, using some form of presentation, either on a chalkboard, a whiteboard, or using presentation software such as PowerPoint. The learner's role in this type of scenario is primarily passive and would include taking notes, following along with the argument as developed by the instructor, and trying to remember the, the ideas as well as to understand them. Assessment in this scenario is usually accomplished using some sort of testing where questions are posed to the learner and the learner must respond. The majority of questions posed would be of the recall type with a few requiring working through limited problem questions, usually of a mathematical nature. And while the picture painted here may be overgeneralized, the scenario will probably be recognizable to most of you. The intent here is not to critique this teaching learning scenario, but to point out how this course tries to deviate from the traditional format. The following slides will actually point out some of those differences. The course structural details is the area that I'd like to start in. As indicated in the course outline and in the previous video clip, each class section in this course will consist of three integrated components. The first of those components is a series of video clips will consist which will consist the, or constitute the lecture portion of the course. These video clips will be placed in public locations which makes them accessible to a wider audience than just those registered in the course. The intent of the video clips presentation is to present a situation or a context within which a problem or problems can be recognized and to instigate discussion through the use of posed analysis and synthesis questions rather than to present a series of ideas that are to be understood and remembered for testing on an exam at a later date. So again, to reiterate, the intent is to instigate discussion through these video clips rather than to provide uh, content for testing at a later date. The discussion then is going to start in the asynchronous uh, group tutorials. These are group tutorial activities that are offered in order to provide a structured discussion about the situations or contexts that are presented in the video clips. Each tutorial session will be attended by a TA, a teaching assistant, who will facilitate the discussion and the activities. The discussion will be uh, structured around the analysis and synthesis questions that are posed in each one of the video clips, but these are really intended to start the discussion rather than to limit it. By sharing ideas and insights into the discussion topics, you will be exposed to the other perspectives and points of view which will feed into developing new understandings of the presented situations and contexts and problems which have been uh, recognized. Ideas will be posed that can lead to the creation of problem solutions that can be taken further in the last integrated component, the third integrated component. So it becomes uh, it, it should be obvious at this point in time that these tutorial sessions are a required portion of the course. Um, this is not a course in which you will go away with the content of the material, learn it so that you can actually uh, produce um, answers, required uh, responses on a some kind of written test at, at the end of the course. This will be a course where you be, will be working specifically with individuals to develop something new, some new understanding and a new um, problem-based learning object that we'll be talking about a little bit later. The online activities then, thirdly, um, will provide additional opportunities to talk with others about the problems identified in the video clips and initially discussed in the tutorial sessions. Postings in the discussion forum will allow others to know what you're thinking about and to initially identify 
potential group members who are interested in similar kinds of ideas and situations contexts within which to set the problem-based learning objects that you will be developing. Uh, the majority of work on the assignments, readings, and PBLO development will occur in these online sessions. So those are the three components, um, the core structural details that we'll be using uh, over and over and over again. To do a, f a little bit further analysis of uh, some of the differences between this course and other courses that you may have taken, we make uh, fairly extensive use of both synchronous and asynchronous technologies. The vast majority of the technologies that are available, so currently available online programs and courses, make use of asynchronous technologies almost exclusively, um, i.e. these are online resources that are used to facilitate information sharing outside of the constraints of time and place among a group of people. Examples of asynchronous technologies are email, discussion forums, the user wall on Facebook, and many others. Each of these technologies allow the user to post information to a network site so that at a later time the information can be accessed by other users at other locations and responses can be made. So they're outside of the constraints of time. So you, each person is allowed to take their own time to respond or not respond. Um, these types of technologies are worthwhile in that they allow for communication between individuals and within groups and they allow time for deeper reflection as you take time between receiving the message and responding to it. This course will make use of asynchronous technologies for these purposes, which require higher order thinking skills such as analysis, synthesis, evaluation, and creation. Learning using online synchronous technologies, however, and these are things uh, that are such as including uh, instant messaging, um, or IM, and video conferencing, or VC, among others, allows for synchronized, that, synchronized, that is, same time and same virtual space communication, and has the potential to support online learners in the development of learning communities. Synchronous online learning has been reported as being more social in nature than asynchronous online learning, and it avoids frustration by allowing for conversations in real time. Self-directed learning is another component that is uh, strongly emphasized within this particular course, and it may not have been as strongly emphasized in other courses at higher, in higher education in your past experiences. Uh, one of the intents of PBL, problem-based learning, as will be seen in, the future, in future video clips, is to support the development of learner intellectual independence. This is similar to what is experienced when learning to ride a bicycle. See the embedded clip. The supports that are gradually, are, are gradually removed until the bike rider is left to progress on their own. In other words, the parent or uh, adult who's usually holding on to the bike usually lets go at some point in time. This course will start with a fair amount of support that's available in tutorial and asynchronous systems, but over the course of the five weeks, more and more of that support will be removed until you, the learners, will be directing your own learning. The displayed graph at the bottom right of this slide suggests that as the teacher-professor-TA uh, combination direction decreases over time, uh, that is the blue line that's uh, decreasing over the course of uh, the five um, sessions that are uh, depicted there, um, more and more of the activity and responsibility for learning will accrue to the students. So that is seen in the rising red line. Now this is somewhat um, atypical or probably is, is not realistic in the sense that that line is smoothly rising in this particular instance. Um, but you should see uh, as the um, teacher direction decreases student um, responsibility and more and more of the learning will actually um, go over to you. Community of learners is also an important uh, portion of this course. Uh, the activities in this course expect you to develop into um, becoming a member of a community of learners. This is based on the ideas of communities of practice as proposed by Etienne Wenger and Jean Labbe. Um, here is an explanation of the implications of instigating the development of a community of learners. It's taken from a recent interview with Etienne Wenger. Uh, I will give you the URL in uh, WebCT so you can follow it on your own. Um, anyways, the quote starts in this way. 
The concept has become a cornerstone for a social theory of learning. Through participation in a community of practice, you can see learning not only as the acquisition of information and skill, but also the transformation of the person, for instance, from a non-member to a member of a community. More generally, learning is, the tr is a transformation of identity, and becoming a certain kind of person is what gives meaning to learning. Recently, uh, Etienne goes on, I was talking with some researchers in medical education in Vancouver, and for them, viewing medical education as a transformation of, of identity was very important, going from just, I'm a regular citizen, to, I'm a doctor. But they were saying that traditional medical education is very focused on information and skills, and there is very little talk about how students are being transformed into a person who is going to be able to give care to others. Having a theory to talk about that was very useful." End quote. There's an emphasis on discourse in this uh, course as well, which may not have been as um, apparent in other courses in higher education that you've already taken. So discussion is very often used as a tool for learning in this course. When designed properly and used thoughtfully, discussion tasks can be an effective learning tool that promotes creativity, as well as generates meaningful interaction and understanding for the learner. Well-designed discussion tasks lead to progressive knowledge-seeking inquiry. And that's a quote or um, a reference to Scardamalia and Bereiter in 1994, or to expansive learning, which is um, taken from Engstrom in 1999, where learners are actively synthesizing new information with prior knowledge and experiences in the process of creating not only new knowledge, but also new understandings of the learning process. Course expectations require that all students will, will need to interact in a number of ways. Talking in the synchronous tutorial sessions will be necessary in order to explore the ideas introduced in the various video clips. You will also need to engage in posting discussions and ideas in the asynchronous activities in order to come to new understandings and to build new knowledge. The form of assessment that's used in this course is authentic assessment, which is a form of assessment in which students are asked to perform real-world tasks that demonstrate meaningful application of essential knowledge and skills. That's a, a reference to John Mueller. Other references are quotes that are taken from individuals in, uh, who have expertise in this particular area. First one, uh, quote, engaging or authentic assessment is engaging and worthy, worthy problems or questions of importance in which students must use knowledge to fashion performances effectively and creatively. The tasks are either replicas of or are analogous to the kinds of problems faced by adult citizens and consumers or professionals in the field. And that's attributed to Grant Wiggins. Um, another quote, performance assessments call upon the examinee to demonstrate specific skills and competencies, that is, to apply the skills and knowledge that they have mastered. And that's attributed to Richard Stiggins. And uh, finally, it's taken again from uh, John Mueller. What does authentic assessment look like? An authentic assessment usually includes a task for students to perform and a rubric by which their performance on the task will be evaluated. And you will see that in the sense of um, this particular course requires you to perform an, a task that is to, to develop uh, your own problem-based learning object and then to uh, provide rationales in the final paper in this course for that PBL uh, O and the choices that you've made within it. To wrap up this question then, or this uh, video clip, um, the synthesis questions at the end of the clip are as follows. Number one, why is a non-traditional format a good choice for this course? Number two, according to the video clip, why is it important for all students in this course to participate in discussion? Number three, why would authentic assessment be used for the assessment of tasks in this course? And four, speculate on the differences between the characteristics of the learning environment described in this video and the nature of PBL. Why would this non-traditional methodology be chosen for this particular course?